Hi guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about the testings of God's chosen people and how if you are God's child, his chosen child, you will be tested. By tested, I mean purified. Just to start off, I just want to address the video I made about God's training, training in God's army. I used a song in that, that God had spoken to me through, but there's parts of the song he didn't speak to me through. And I thought he wanted me to use the song, and then he showed me later he did not, and I had already put it up. I, I'm sorry if it offended anyone. It wasn't. Those lyrics were not meant for you. And I, I said that clearly in the title. I was trying to use it for the part where it says, I will make a man out of you. Because God makes a man out of me. He makes Jesus Christ out of me. He refines me in his image. But there's parts of that song that God didn't want me to use in edifying. So I'm sorry if it offended you. It wasn't for you. And no matter what level you're at, even if you're at a very low level in Christ, you are a great warrior for him. But he will refine you. You're not spineless or anything like that. It was just part of the song. Now I put a new song to it that God likes. And that's edifying. So I'm sorry. You see, I'm a human. I can make mistakes. But I wanted to get into this. The, the testings of God's children. You know those m magazines that God used to speak to me? I'll have you know that when, when my dad put those magazines at my door, he didn't even know they were from another for another person. He didn't even look. He thought it was something I would like. He didn't even know. God owns everything. He can give me whatever he wants. He can give me something someone else was going to have and give it to me. But anyway, I looked through the, through the magazines to see if God was going to speak in any other way. And this is what I saw. Okay. Those are butterflies there, which God uses to talk to me. It means transformation. It's the process of refinement. As in you come to Christ, you're like a caterpillar. He, he refines you into a beautiful butterfly. Now those lavender trees there, La the lavender trees represent grace and purity. And they kind of like represent us as a tree. Now, why do I think God spoke to me through this? I'm going to read you what it says. Pied Piper, Pugster Blue Butterfly Bush. Fragrant Flowers. It says it's a butterfly bush, but... It looks like lavender to me. Large blooms on sturdy stems, dwarf size and hardy. Before they reach your garden, our flowering shrubs undergo years of trials and testings. Testing for color, quantity of blooms, reliability, foliage, and ability to thrive with ease. Only a few prove they're worthy of the number one plant brand. What is the plant brand? It's called Proven Winners. That's God speaking. Do you see that? 
They go through years of trial and testing, and only a few prove they're worthy. Proven winners. Then this was on the back. This is a tree, a fruit tree that's being watered. You could say that's like me. That God waters me during my trial and I become a greater tree, refines me. Or it could be that I'm watering you. Making you into a better tree. Paul said like some plant and some water, something like this. I even told people I'm watering you with the word of God. And then it says this, Project Joy. Let it be a joy. <laughs> That's God speaking. Isn't that awesome? Now when it says the only are proven worthy, I mean, we got to stay in repentance, right? And it says butterfly bush, but I look at it as lavender. Looks like lavender to me. And lavender represents grace and purity. So that's some of the things it represents. We are growing in grace. I'm helping you to grow in grace. That's what I'm doing when I'm showing you Pharisee doctrines and all that. If you're God's child... You're chosen. I am chosen. I know this. I know I'm chosen. And if you're chosen and you have a high calling in God, the refinement and the testing and the purifying that you will go through will be pretty high level. That's what he's done with me. He purified me greatly. Great testing. If you're chosen, it's a blessing, but it's also a test. He chose me to do this work. If you're born again, you're chosen. Doesn't that make you feel special? The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. Now that could be lost people. I mean, there could be people who are called and come to the kingdom. But I think all the people who go to the kingdom are chosen. It could be some called people too that, that weren't chosen. I'm not really sure. It says we were chosen from the foundation of the world. But just because you're chosen doesn't mean that you don't have a free will to go off and do evil and not obey God. He'll make it hard for you, though. Look at Rabbi Zacharias. He seemed pretty wise. He went off and did horrible things. You still have a will here in this. If you didn't have a will, it wouldn't glorify God. He's not making you do it. But there's going to be discipline. Now, Abraham. Abraham. God made Abraham the father of nations. He was God's chosen person. He chose Abraham for this. Abraham and Sarah wanted a child. They were old in age and God said, I will give you a child. And he did, even though they were old, very old. Abraham was like a hundred. Sarah was like 90 something or 90 around that age. And he gave them a child, Isaac. And he, he told Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of nations, Abraham. You're going to be so blessed. And guess what he did to Abraham? He tested him severely. Super 
testing. You know what he told Abraham after he gave him Isaac and, and Isaac was at a certain age? He, he told him, sorry, I was getting a call. He was like, Abraham, go and sacrifice your son to me. Now it doesn't say, it says that he tempted him with this. It was a test. Now it doesn't say Abraham's reaction really, but I could think Abraham was probably like, what? <laughs> what do you mean God? God's like, go sacrifice him to me. I gave him to you and I can take him away. Now people would hear that and they would think, how could God do that? How could he say that? He did. Because his ways are not our ways. So Abraham took Isaac and he took him, I think, to a mountain. And Isaac, he brought two other men. And then he had the two men sit somewhere else or stand somewhere else. And he took Isaac with him. And Isaac was like, Dad, where is the, where is the sacrifice? And Abraham's like, God's going to provide one, son. Now when he said that, I really wonder if Abraham thought that he would provide one or if he was talking about his son being the sacrifice. But he trusted God, right? Now today, God would not do that. Abraham knew it was God speaking. He could hear God very clearly. Okay, that's not something God would do today. It's just specifically for that time. And because Abraham was going to be so blessed, he put him through an incredible test. If he told Sarah to do that, I don't think she would do that. But so Abraham was going to do it. I think it says he took his knife to do it. And then the angel of the Lord stopped him and said, don't do it, pretty much. I know I'm not saying word for word scripture, but this is just what happened. And then God provided a ram for sacrifice. And God was like, because you have not withheld your only son from me, I know that you fear me. And I will bless you and you will be the, he meant like, oh, you will be the father of nations. I don't think he said it right in that scripture, but you'll be very blessed. That's a very high testing, isn't it? Sacrificing his own son. When people hear something like that and that God did that and it kind of sounds kind of I'm sorry I'm getting another call it sounds kind of like whoa but God's ways are not our ways he tested him greatly because Abraham was chosen He was very, he, he had a high status, a high position God was putting him in. Everyone was going to know who he was. And he's like, I'm going to make sure you're going to put me first. I'm going to make sure that you're going to obey me. You would even love me more than what I've given you, your own son. And then he passed the test. 
when when Paul when Jesus Christ appeared to Paul Jesus was like why do you kick against the pricks why are you disobeying me and then Paul God God let him be blinded for three days after he saw Jesus, the brightness of Jesus was so great that he got, was blinded. And then the man, I believe, that he chose to help Paul after that and everything. I think he was like questioning it when God told him to go do it. And God was like, this man is a chosen vessel unto me. And he will see what it is to suffer for my name. That's what he said. Paul was a chosen vessel. He went through severe testings, Paul. He talks about it in the Bible. You will be tested. But God will be with you in the testings. I mean, Paul died for Jesus Christ, I believe. So did Peter. They were beaten for him. John the Baptist lost his head for Jesus Christ. Now, when I went through my second trial and afterwards, after the trial, God gave me this dream. In the dream, all these things happened that happened in the second trial. And then I went into this deep water. I was in this deep water. And I heard this voice and it said, I was always with you. I was always holding your hand. That was God. The God describes to me my trials and testings, the, the really hard ones, as me being in deep waters. He's shown this to me through videos. And it's biblical. He, he That he does this. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. When you go through the waters, I'll be with you. The waters of refinement. You know how I said we're going to be in green pastures, then you're going to be in the valley of the shadow of death, then you're going to be through paths of righteousness. I think the valley of the shadow of death for me is the deep waters or the paths of righteousness is the deep waters too. And when you walk through the fire, as in the refining fire, I will be with you and you will not be burned. Like you're not going to be totally destroyed. I'm just going to burn off what I don't want in you to purify you, to make you ready for the master's use so that he can use you and you can fulfill your mission on earth. It says, strive to enter into the narrow gate and the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. It's narrow, the way to heaven. Look at Rabbi Zacharias. He preached Christ. Yet, he fell bad. I'm not saying he didn't go to heaven, but he did not continue in righteousness. He did not live in repentance. The devil's going to try to get you out of repentance. You must continue on and win. Do you see what that magazine says? Proven winners. They go through testings and trials. 
And, f and few make it. I'm not saying you're not going to make it. Jesus Christ is with you. I believe all God's children will make it. Okay? If you stay in repentance. The whole once saved, always saved, false doctrine. I don't know where this comes from. It's, a, it's not of God. We must endure until the end. And if you're going through the trials and testings, it's going to be difficult. You'll probably fall, but God's doing it for a reason. and He's with you. Know that if you're God's chosen child, you will be tested. And it will glorify him. It says that, that it has been given unto us to suffer for his name. Not that he wants you to suffer, he wants you to have joy, but if you stay with him and you suffer, it glorifies him. People who die for him, Paul, Peter, their deaths glorified him because they suffered for him. It shows how much you love him. So you will be tested and tried. And if your calling is higher, it's going to be a greater level of testing. But it's all worth it. Blessed is the man when he is tried and he overcomes because he will receive the crown. Right? That's not the exact scripture, but that's what it means. The crown of life you will receive. If you stay in repentance. Alright, I love you guys. Bye.